All right, welcome to math today. We are getting back into fractions and we are comparing fractions. Before we learn the trick today about how to compare fractions without drawing pictures, what does it mean to compare a fraction? Hayden? Um, see if they're equivalent or not equivalent. Okay, so sometimes we want to see if they're equal. What else can we tell when we compare fractions? Hudson, do you have an idea? Can one fraction be bigger or smaller than another? Okay, so what symbols did we use on Friday? We used some symbols like way back from August. Zoe, you remember the three symbols we were using when we compared fractions? Abby? Um, the yep. Okay, remember greater than, less than, and equal to. So this is really what we're focusing on. And I'm going to teach you a trick today how to compare the fractions without drawing the picture and seeing the space that's filled. So... I need a reader to read about this grasshopper and a beetle. Abby, go for it, and then we'll look at this picture. The grasshopper weighs about um, two out of a hundred. We can read that two hundredths. Two hundredths of an ounce. A beetle weighs eight tenths of an ounce. Which, which weighs more? Okay. Now, they drew a picture. I need everyone up here with me. I'm seeing eyes glazing over already. I know it's early on Monday. Okay, look at the picture. Does it make sense that this grasshopper picture shows two out of a hundred? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I want everyone to write it next to the picture. Two hundredths. Out of one hundred spaces, only two are shaded in. Okay, now what about beetle? What fraction can I write next to beetle? Eric? Eight tenths. Eight tenths. Okay. Now why can't I just take a look at my numerators and say, oh, beetle's bigger. Because eight's bigger than two, right? Why can't I say that, Hayden? Because, first of all, you have to look at your denominator. Ding, 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 she's got it. If my denominator is not the same, I cannot just look at my number on the top and compare, okay? That's rule number one. Can someone repeat that rule to me? What's the rule, Josiah? You cannot compare the numerator, you have to compare the numerator and the denominator. You have to look at the denominator. Now, what if they were both tens? Could I compare them then? Yeah. What if they were both hundreds? Could I compare them then? Yeah. Today, I'm going to teach you how to turn this fraction into a fraction with a hundred in the denominator. Then, would it be easy to compare which is bigger? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, let me go scroll my page down a little bit. And, you know what, actually? I am just going to actually turn this book off. What oh. So if you've got, you've got lots of space around the margins of your book, so just write this with me. I'm going to turn one fraction into a different fraction so my denominators match, okay? So somewhere in your book, or if you want your dry erase board out, you can use that as well. We have 8 tenths, right? And we have 2 one hundredths. So go ahead and write those down, either somewhere in your book margin or on your whiteboard. Now, does anybody know before we do all this work, just using your brains, which of these fractions shaded a bigger part of the whole thing? Uh, Eric? Uh, tenths? Yeah, eight tenths was almost the entire square filled, right? So we should think already this is going to be bigger. So let me teach you the trick and we'll see if it works. All right. Can I turn my 10 into 100 by multiplying it by something? What do I multiply it by to get to 100? Cadence? Okay, so everybody follow along with me. Okay, here is the trick. I'm going to do the same thing I've done before, times something over something equals something over something. Okay, I told you that would come in handy. So set that up. I'm going to give you just a second to get all that ready. So we are changing our denominator of 10 into a new denominator. And Cadence was exactly right. If I multiply by 10, would I get 100? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's fill, a, let's fill in a 10. All right, now, what do you all think I'm going to have to put in the top of my fraction? We've done something like this before. Hudson? A 10? Yes. Okay, just like before. If I put a 10 in my denominator, 
10 in the top. Same rules, okay? So it kind of keeps it easy. Put your 10 in your numerator. All right, now what do I get when I multiply 8 times 10? Going across my numerator. Josiah? 80. 80. Okay. Did we just find an equivalent fraction for 8 tenths? Yeah. That's exactly how we find equivalent fractions, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not catching this, I need you to jump in. Okay, we just found an equivalent fraction. So these two are the same. Now I can use this to compare against this. So let's check. If I have 80 one hundredths, you don't need to write this down, compared to two hundredths, which one's bigger? Angie? 80 one hundredths. So I need to make sure my alligator mouth eats the bigger number, right? That's how you compare numbers. So we've only done one example. Does anyone have any questions before we start our second example? Okay. So basically, you find an equivalent fraction where your denominators match. And then it's so easy to compare. All right? So go ahead. If you got your whiteboard out, erase it. Let's try another one. All right. How about this? Let's compare 5 twelfths to 4 sixths. So first step, write both of your fractions down that you are going to compare. When, I, when it says to compare, I just want to know which one's bigger, which one's smaller, or maybe they're exactly the same. So what's my first step? What's my goal? Do I want to get my denominators to match or my numerators to match? What's always my goal? Eric? What? Do I want my denominators to match to compare them or my numerators? What? I'll bounce it on to Hudson. Hudson? Denominator. Denominator. Okay. Now here's where you got to really think things through. Everybody look up here. Would it be easy to change my 6 into a 12 using multiplication or the other way? Abby? Um, using multiplication. Okay, so 6 times what would be 12? Abby? Two. 2. So it does work out evenly. So let's change this fraction so it has a denominator of 12. So we need to multiply it by something over something to get something over something. Set that up. I should see everyone's pencils or markers writing. All right, now our goal, we want 12 in the denominator. So I can put 12 right here. I, I have to get 12. So I'll give everyone a moment to write that down. And then we need to decide, well, if my goal is 12, what's the only number that will work here? Angie? Three. Close. Think that again. 6 times what is 12? Two. Nice job. All right, someone different. Six times two is 12. Now what has to go in my numerator? What has to go up here? I need a different hand. William? Eight. Well, if a two's in the bottom, what has to go on the top? Do we have to do the same number? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's the biggest key today. Has to be the same number. So once I know that two has to be here to make it 12, I stick a two on the top. But Liam, you're thinking eight because we're going to get an 8 over here, right? So you were right. We just had to put the 2 here first. All right, now can I compare 5 twelfths to 8 twelfths more easily? Yeah. Way easier than thinking about 4 sixths because my brain couldn't decide which was bigger or smaller. So someone tell me, will my alligator mouth open to my 5 twelfths or my 8 twelfths? Zoe? 8 twelfths. Nice job. All right. I need everybody to stand up, stretch your arms over your head, sit back down, erase your boards, and we're going to do another one. Stand up, stretch your arms. I know it's Monday. I painted my ceiling yesterday. So I, my, yes, my arms are so tired. Yeah, we had to fix our drywall. So my arms were up over my head on a ladder all day, and we sanded. So I'm sore and tired, so we got to stay awake. Okay, those of you at home, I hope you took a stretch break with us. We're going to try another one. All right, get your boards erased. I promise this will come very easy to you after you do several. It's already easy. All right, let's try this one. 
let's do three eighths and one fourth. Three eighths compared to one fourth. So your question might say, student, which fraction is larger? Well, we have two choices. We can either draw pictures, which could be kind of difficult, right? Or we can do this trick. And the trick is get a common denominator, okay? Common just means they're the same. So which fraction do we need to change so it matches the other one? Hmm, Emma? One over four. Yes, so set it up. One fourth times something over something equals something over, what's our target denominator? What are we trying to get here? What are we shooting for? Abby? Eight. Eight. So go ahead and set that up. Okay, this really is the hardest part. If you can get this set up like this, you can do the rest. So I'm going to give everyone about ten more seconds, get that written down. And once you have that written down, your next thought is, what has to go here to make this true? Hmm. Emma? Two over two. Yep. We know that 4 times 2 is 8, and if I put a 2 in the bottom, I have to put a 2 in the top. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 eighths. 2 eighths. So now I can compare. I like to put a circle in the middle to put my sign in, just what I like to do. Now this becomes a whole lot easier, right? Someone who hasn't answered a question yet today, which side is larger? Thank you. Quentin. Three eighths. All right, remember, alligators are hungry. They want to eat bigger meals. They'll eat the bigger thing. What would happen if I found out my fractions were exactly the same? What symbol do I put in there? Eric? Equal sign. Equal sign, okay, and it's just plain old equal sign. All right, any questions? Okay, the next one, I'm going to let you start working on it on your own before I finish it up here. So erase your boards or find some space. All right, let's try this one. Five, six, and two-thirds. Please compare those fractions. Please compare those fractions. So I'm just going to wait a minute, but my first question, which fraction are we going to be changing to match the other one? Which one do we have to change? Eric? Um, we need to be changing two-thirds. So set it up the way you think you should. I'm going to kind of bounce around, see how we're doing. Okay. Yes. Okay, Angie has a really good question. So it is sometimes hard to decide which one you're going to change. When you multiply a number, I'm going to first think, can I multiply my six by something to get a three? Does that work? No. Because six is bigger, right? But can I multiply a three by something to get a six? Uh -huh. yes. yes. So that's the one you know you need to change. So at this point, you should have it set up like this. And we know our denominator has to become a six. Okay? So now I'll let you guys finish it up. I'm done. All right, those of you not working... You have a, a quiz over this on Wednesday, so I would focus. All right, someone who is finished. What do I need to put down here to make the bottom true? Okay, next. Um, a, two. a two. And because I put a two in my denominator, what goes in the top, Josiah? Two. Two. And when I multiply across, two times two is four. Ah, they were very close. So now I can compare five sixths and four sixths. Zoe? Five. Five is bigger. All right, so just to hear you clarify this, if I have two fractions with different denominators, can I just look at the numerators and tell which one's bigger? Nope, I can't. What if, remember the grasshopper one? What if I had this? You have to be careful, right? I can't just look at that and go, equal, they're equal. No. 
How do you know using your brain that these fractions are not equal? How do you guys know that? Quentin? Um, because there's two tenths and then there's also two um, hundred, so um, the only way that can be equal is if you put on two tenths, if you put another zero on the other. Right, so I would have to change my two tens to equal something over 100, right, to compare them. And I know that 10 times 10 is 100. So really, this is like 21 hundredths, right? So then we could compare. This is bigger. So please be careful. Your denominators have to match, okay? Any questions before we start working on some practice? Okay. All right, friends at home, I hope that this made sense to you as well. I will see you soon. See ya. Peace.